In this class 50 of our medium level refrigeration and air conditioning course, we are going to see the 7 steps recommended by the MAVE refrigerator manufacturer to work safely with equipment that works with RSI X100 or refrigerant gas. Let's start with the first step. 1. RSI X100 or refrigerant gas discharge to extract the RSI X100 a gas, perforation pliers must be used, which must be connected to a hose, which directs the gas flow to the vacuum pump. The vacuum pump must have a hose of at least 5 meters long, which must go outside the premises. Now the filter must be perforated, taking care that the perforation clamps are well fixed, then the RSI X100 the gas is let out into the outside environment, only through the discharge hose. It is recommended that the vacuum pump is turned on for 5 minutes. 2. Cut filter tubes without flame and start the equipment use your tube cutter to remove the filter. Also cutting the capillary. Once this process is done, the equipment is left on for 3 minutes to ensure that there is no remnants in the refrigerant gas system. 3. Compressor and filter change by flame method. If the process requires a change of compressor, from this moment you can do it safely, using the turner to remove the solder joints. You can also place the new filter to seal the system. 4. Well charging valve. A charging valve must be desoldered from which the plug and valve of the charging coupling will first be removed, since if it is not disassembled, the heat can damage the packing. Once the charging valve has been welded and cooled, the charging coupling valve is replaced. 5. Vacuum the system. To carry out the vacuum process, a hose must be connected to the compressor loading valve directed towards the low pressure gauge and the other service hose of the pressure gauges towards the vacuum pump, then the pump is turned on by a determined time of 10 minutes and thus reach the recommended vacuum value. Once the vacuum time is over, it must be evaluated that it is stable and maintained, it can be evaluated by closing the vacuum pump manometer. 6. Refrigerant Gas Charge A. Connect Scale B. The service valve is placed on the can and connected with a hose at the inlet of the scale, in addition to placing the can on the scale. Cease turns on the scale, the can valve opens, the load to be carried out is programmed, start is pressed and the refrigeration equipment starts up. 7. System Sealing Once the RSI X100 a refrigerant gas charge by weight has been completed, the system must be sealed. To carry out this process, the service valve must be removed. For which, with the help of a pinch-off clamp, the passage of gas in the service tube is obstructed. The tube is cut after the clamps and welding is carried out without releasing the clamps. Once the obstruction is made, the forceps are removed. RSI X100 has a volumetric capacity 50% lower than R12 in RON 134A, so it cannot be considered as a substitute for these gases and equipment that is already working, because RSI X100 requires a larger volume compressor and a larger capillary thick, therefore isobutane should only be used in equipment designed for this gas. It is very important when working with RSI X100 that it be of high purity, since any proportion with other impurities, such as sulfides or water, can contribute to the degradation of the lubricating oils in the installation or breakage of compressors. It also sometimes happens that if the RSI X100 is not of high purity, it can be mixed with other hydrocarbons, which can drastically vary the physical and thermodynamic properties of the original refrigerant. The isobutane used in refrigeration applications is not honored like those for domestic use, and it is not easily detectable in case of leaks. Now my partner Luis is going to study the working pressures of RSI X100. Go ahead Luis with the explanation. On the screen we have a pressure gauge specially designed to work with RSI X100 a refrigerant gas. Remember that this gas works with quite low pressures compared to other refrigerants. The pressure values for RSI X100 are values below atmospheric pressure. As the values of the manometer are calibrated to mark zero when it is exposed to the pressure of the environment. The pressures that RSI X100 will have are negative because it has a pressure below the atmosphere. 
as it is difficult to have a precise measurement for such small pressure values, it is highly recommended to work with RSI X100 only with special manometers for this gas. This manometer clearly brings the temperature scale, together with the depression in a very simple way. Thus, for example, for a low temperature of minus 20 degrees Celsius, typical of domestic refrigerators, we only have to wait for the needle to stop, with the equipment turned on at the value of minus 20 degrees Celsius, thus obtaining the following value of pressure. In addition to using the appropriate pressure gauge, the RSI X100 or refrigerant gas charge must be carried out by weight, thus reducing the chances of error. RSI X100 can be charged in both the liquid and vapor phases. Now we are going to verify what the value of the high pressure will be. For an environment of 20 degrees Celsius, we are going to have an average condensation temperature of about 30 degrees Celsius. Now let's set the needle to 30 degrees Celsius and note the pressure value. If we want to know the pressure that the equipment should have, being turned off, we are going to search the manometer for the value of the ambient temperature, that is, we place the needle at 20 degrees C, and thus we can read the pressure value. Now we are going to compare the compressors with RSI X100 against the compressors that work with Rhone 134A. Go ahead Luis with the explanation. Let's make the comparison, starting with a typical quarter HP compressor used in domestic refrigerators. For Rhone 134A using the Embraco catalog we obtain the following results. For a refrigerator that works at minus 20 degrees Celsius, the cooling capacity that this compressor can achieve is 940 BTU per hour. Now in the Embraco catalog but for RSI X100, the compressor can reach a cooling capacity of 852 BTU per hour. This means that the compressor with Rhone 134A, having a greater cooling capacity, would reach a low temperature faster than the RSI X100 a compressor. Now we are going to study the electrical consumption for the compressor that works with Rhone 134A, whose value will be close to 179.4 W, which is calculated with the energy efficiency factor in the table. Now for the compressor with RSI X100, a direct consumption value of 124W is obtained from the table. As we can see the energy consumption of the RSI X100 compressor is less than the consumption with the Rhone 134A compressor.